so much. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction. And uh, a very good afternoon to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. So today I'm going to talk about the psychological intervention measures during the COVID from a Sri Lankan perspective. Dr. Durgesh, have you opened the uh, slides? Uh, just a second, just a second. I'm doing it. Yeah. You please continue. I'm just sharing it. Okay, I will open it from my laptop and keep talking. Yeah. Right. So COVID-19. COVID-19 is a new term for all of us. We were not familiar with a pandemic before, especially it's a very new terminology for the Sri Lankans. We were not prepared for any change. So World Health Organization declared the outbreak of a new coronavirus disease to be a public health emergency of international concern in January 2020. In March 2020, WHO declared that COVID-19 has reached the status of a pandemic. But why is it so difficult for us? Why did COVID got so popular and it gave such a heartbreak to all of us? In my interpretation, uh, after reading a lot of uh, metaphysical information as well, I feel that we all were in a rat race just before the COVID. For a long period of time, we were in a rat race trying to achieve our needs and means. So I think according to the Newton's third law, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So this is where this comes in. I feel this is the opposite reaction, equal and opposite reaction of the universe in order to make us think. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Give us more time to have a break. Yeah. Is the screen visible to all of us? Uh, Rashmi, man, is it visible? Mukesh, sir? Yes, I can see it. Oh. Yes, yes, it is visible. Okay, okay, thank you. Shall I continue? Shall I continue? Please, ma'am, please continue. Please. Yes. Yes. So I think uh, from this perspective, it is, the, it is an equal and opposite reaction of the universe to make us stop for a while and understand as well, to have more awareness, to have more clarity in mind and to move on, to make us love ourselves more. Because we were all in a rat race before, and I feel that we were just moving ahead without giving time for ourselves and without having much understanding or love for ourselves. So next, our psychological preparedness was quite low when it comes to facing a pandemic, especially for Sri Lankans. It's a very new terminology, and we were not familiar with a pandemic before. Prevalence. Up until today, there had been 1,806 confirmed COVID cases, out of which 891 have recovered, and there had been 11 deaths. COVID-19 related stressors. I have pinpointed only the most uh, prevalent kind of stressors, but there are many more. Fear of being exposed to the infected sources. This was a very big stressor because a lot of information was put forward and uh, we were told to wear masks, the curfew was on. Likewise, everyone had a lot of fear that the contamination of this would lead to death. So more than people giving information about uh, ways to tolerate and ways to face it, people most often spoke about the fear related to it. Uh, from the Sri Lankan aspect, I think it is not very much of a good sign. But 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 by all means, it was done to control the spread so that people are more alert and they would wear the masks and they would take necessary precautions. However, the fear was more uh, than people being alert and uh, cautious about it. People were very fearful because of the information that was given out. Loss of loved ones. Definitely, it's a very big stressor. And uh, most of the people who lost their loved ones, there were 11, of, uh, 11 individuals who lost their lives because of COVID up until today. So most of the people uh, underwent a lot of difficulty because of this, because majority could not even attend to their funeral, uh, their cremations, because uh, I think only one person was allowed to join the cremation ceremony from each family. Uh, infected family members were another problem. 
So infected people were sent to the hospital, whereas the others, for obvious reasons, will not be allowed to go and see them. And even the family members were sent for quarantine. So quarantine centers were quite far from Colombo. However, they were given all the food and uh, all the requirements were provided free of charge. Economic loss was a great problem. Most of the businessmen lost their businesses and some co companies had to be closed. Majority lost their jobs. Some companies paid only half of the monthly salary uh, and people faced a lot of problems like that. Uh, and especially this was imminent in the poverty striking areas. People did not have a way of living. But government initiated uh, a scheme where uh, the uh, people who are underprivileged and who did not have any source of income to be given uh, 5,000 rupees every month. But in order to get that, uh, they they have to uh, they had to uh, prove that their income is very low and they have lost their uh, jobs. Also, they had to go and meet the uh, grama sevaka. Grama sevaka means the village head. So they had to uh, prove to the grama sevaka that they are uh, not earning a proper income in order to get this dole. Psychosocial effects was very much prevalent. Depression, anxiety, psychosomatic preoccupations, insomnia, increased substance use and domestic violence. So most of the uh, people who are alcoholic were not able to uh, because no alcohol was available and uh, they came to a position where they could not take it anymore. They couldn't stand their family members, so a lot of cases in this regard was there. Uh, the, uh, the domestic violence rate was uh, increased. Consequences of the COVID. As a matter of fact, a long period of self-quarantine, curfew and a lockdown. So most of the things were stagnated. People had to work from home, home schooling, and uh, when it comes to the Colombo suburb, yeah, people were quite affluent. They have their uh, technological devices and they were somehow able to get through to all their needs and means. For example, if they want to order some food, they can do so by uh, uh, clicking onto one of the supermarkets and in about two to three days time, the food will be delivered. But uh, people from uh, far, far away rural areas did not have their technological devices and also they were not quite familiar with uh, going online and they were, they were never, this is totally a new system to Sri Lanka. Working from home was also difficult, especially for the parents who have uh, parents to uh, tackle the children. Temporary unemployment. Some people had uh, some people lost their jobs and some people had temporary unemployment where they were not given a monthly salary. Homeschooling of children again was quite difficult because people had to people did not have the technological devices to connect to the teachers and also they were not familiar with this. And all the, also the parents found it difficult because of homeschooling and work from home. Everything happened within one entity. So everyone was together and it was a big change to how it was before. So whilst attending, attending to the children's needs, the parents had to carry on their work as well. So this was definitely a big stress for them. Lack of physical contact with others led to a lot of frustrations. Especially the people who are very outgoing and introverts, they found it extremely difficult. And uh, if you take as uh, an example, I'm also a very introverted person. I'm very uh, people centered. I love talking and meeting people. So I found it extremely difficult. There were days I couldn't cope. I was tearing. So but when I come across, when I talk to many people, I figured out that they were also feeling the same. Uh, adapting to life lifestyle changes was also difficult. It, it was a stressor because most of the things had, had to be done online uh, and some people had to stop their wedding ceremonies and they had to be postponed and people came across a lot of, lot of difficulties like that. 
difficulty securing medical care and medication. So sp specific hotline was given and people were supposed to ring on that line and give the list of medications that they need. And it took about one week uh, for the medicines to be uh, arrived. Managing the fear of contra contracting the virus. Like I explained before, that was also an issue. Sleep dis disturbances were there because we were all uh, trying to somehow spend the day doing something. Most of the people were very much attached to the television. So as a matter of fact, uh, there were a lot of sleep disturbances, maybe because the functioning of the circadian rhythms changed and got used to a new way of it. Uh, subsequently getting the sleep patterns disturbed. Many uh, was ultimately uh, insomniac. So people uh, nowadays, there are a lot of uh, patients and clients for problems with insomnia. Having inadequate supplies. Yes, the demand was so high because uh, uh, during the curfew, the curfew was on for about two and a half months. And in between, there were days of, uh, where uh, the curfew was lifted only for a few hours, where people were able to go out and purchase what they want. Only few supermarkets and uh, some boutiques were opened. So because of that, the demand was so high. People, people even collected stuff. They bought stuff uh, for months and months. So because of that, some people missed uh, getting certain requirements that they had because of the inadequacy. Okay, vulnerable groups. Uh, like Dr. Anamika mentioned before, even in Sri Lanka, the elderly population was very much affected. And the children as well, because children are the people who used to play and go out, meet their friends, mingle with others. So they found it very difficult and also they did not know how to express it. And sometimes because their uh, parents and the adults are also burdened with their work, they did not have time to listen to the children. The children were not accepted. That was another issue. Individuals with pre-existing physical or psychological conditions were also more vulnerable. So they were anyway advised. A uh, lot of publicity was given to encourage them to take their medicines on time and also to uh, look forward to getting appropriate medical advice because tele-doctor facility was available uh, where the people were able to connect to the doctors online. Elderly people with compromised immune function, uh, as Dr. Uh, Anamika mentioned earlier, and those living or receiving care in congregated settings uh, were also very much vul vulnerable to this uh, condition. And people were stagnated in one place. They were not able to go about, walk about, so uh, poor exercise. As a matter of fact, they had sleep disturbances because they were not feeling tired. They were more like numb emotionally and physically both. They were feeling numb. Uh, so this led to a lot of uh, adverse psychosocial outcomes. However, uh, we uh, as psychologists gave publicity and spoke to people as much as possible, giving out the message that it's quite normal to be feeling stressed during this current situation. However, it was important to be aware and then accept it and then look for action. So, hello. Yes, it was it. It was important to be aware, then accept the situation and then look for action. So this is uh, the theory that we focused uh, in the process of looking for interventions. Um, Feeling stressed does not mean that you cannot do the job. So it's not that you are incompetent. It's a totally new change. So that is how we came across this situation. And this is common to everyone. So we try to inculcate that thought in people so that people are trying to uh, be more aware of the situation and try to accept the change and uh, work accordingly so that they can face the future. So it was 
it was very much of a need to make them feel resilient because resilience is what is mostly important at this stage because now that the covid has happened it's not like we can remove it or we can't completely forget it but we can always look forward for the future by being resilient psychological symptoms here and there I think I mentioned few before as well, but predominantly uh, the immediate psychological symptoms were sadness and frustration, uh, low self-esteem, anxiety, violence, insomnia, stress and irritability. Uh, most of the people rec uh, said that they were feeling irritable and even the people who were very active and were able to uh, do their uh, work very methodically came to a, came to a situation where they are kind of numb and they don't express themselves and they did not feel like uh, working anymore so they thought that this is it and there is no end to it and they can't move forward but with lot of effort by uh, disseminating lot of information uh, people were able to uh, we were able to inculcate that there is still hope and uh, we can move forward and we can get over this situation on the long run uh, one of the primary concerns were uh, post traumatic stress order the stress disorder so no matter what we do there would be at least a few percentage that will be drawn to the uh, post traumatic uh, uh, conditions however we are uh, we are making we are taking precautions to prevent that and we are trying to make the pop people very resilient so that such circumstances would be reduced psychological interventions so uh, there was a hotline uh, 139 not meant specifically for uh, people who are stressed so they can at any time give a call free of charge and they get connected to a, a professional counselor or a psychologist so they can take any time and they can keep talking and express themselves so i think this was one of the best interventions that took place during the these two months and it's still on i think this will be continued for some time period until uh, people feel more resilient uh, and they their psychology is uh, the psychological is uh, psychology is back to a better condition uh, and also automated uh, services like smsing calls from different uh, telephone service providers were uh, given free of charge and a lot of uh, positive mes messages were shared that there's hope how to be resilient and there were online programs and uh, some of the trainers uh, gave uh, certain uh, online programs where people can um, learn along with an e-certificate so people who did not have a good educational background uh, got this opportunity and uh, they were able to make use of it and they were able to learn a lot uh, so the positive side was that even though there were so many negative sides, the people had some uh, uh, positive things as well. Uh, limit the number of times you seek information. Yes. So uh, as psychologists, uh, we also give the message that they should limit the number of times that they seek the uh, seek the COVID related information. Information as in not the information to take care of themselves by the information related to deaths so the more you embrace the negativity the more you see uh, uh, the uh, the negative side the sadness the frustration you're more likely to embrace it so we encourage people not to uh, not to uh, always look for the number of deaths from time to time but rather get involved in uh, different activities which would be uh, fruitful for them and also would be beneficial for them in the future uh, for example learning something new that they were not able to learn uh, uh, up until now be mindful and uh, practice mindfulness so that was very important living in the present moment is something that we can uh, get get over the uh, situation there's no point worrying about the past because it's over now but we have to be very mindful and we have to listen to ourselves accept ourselves for who we are and then think of moving ahead uh, so now after listening and seeing a lot of information which is uh, fearful and uh, which is not very pleasant i would say uh, our subconscious mind is uh, 
full up with a lot of garbage and also a lot of negativity. So it's important to rewire it. So um, uh, in the process of rewiring your subconscious mind, we encourage our patients to be more mindful, do a lot of breathing work, take deep breathing, take deep breaths, and uh, ego eradication uh, strategies, strategies were taught, and uh, they were taught to be more mindful so that they can um, uh, slowly get over this process. And more than uh, getting over the whole scenario will take a bit of time, but as for now, as psychologists, we encourage them to be resilient and try to understand the situation, accept it, and uh, live happily for the moment. Seek information for, from reliable sources. So uh, it's important to uh, look for reliable sources. So some people were spreading rumors, but it was not very apparent. Uh, only a few cases were recorded. Uh, so that was also important uh, as a psychological intervention because some people uh, got scared uh, by just listening to uh, unreliable sources. So people were uh, educated on this as well. Um, be responsible for yourself as well as others that that was very important even i think this was a very good time period where uh, this uh, this factor uh, to be inculcated in the children as well children from this time onwards if children also can uh, learn to be responsible and be uh, there for yourself i think it's a very good thing uh, engage in healthy activities that you enjoy. For example, yoga. A lot of yogis, a lot of yoga teachers offered their classes online. So people were able to participate and most of the time they were uh, free classes. So that was another psychological intervention. So people had something to engage, especially something like yoga is a release. It's a means of unwinding. So it was of uh, great uh, help for most of the people. Uh, and also people were uh, educated to have their meals on time and also to take safety precautions, especially when it comes to food, uh, eat healthy food, uh, to have a, a balanced meal. Because uh, these little things, though they sound very simple and babyish, might be ignored by people at this time because of the pandemic and because of what is running in their heads because of the frustration that they are being led to they can there is possibility that they may even uh, forget these very simple facts so because of that uh, it was another intervention taken so we were always giving information sharing information on social media uh, platforms uh, and encourage them to take care of themselves with regard to food and exercise and the simple factors uh, as such. And uh, also the people were uh, told to utilize this time to do something that they love. And especially for the parents now, they, even though they kept saying it was a very difficult time because they had to work from home. On the other hand, if they were, uh, if you actually have a proper chat with them, some of the parents uh, were able to come and tell that it was uh, it was kind of a gift as well because they got some time to spend spend time with their children as well. So this cognitive restructuring was another psychological intervention. So whenever they came up with a problem, rather than uh, trying to solve it by uh, getting them centered in the problem, cognitive reconstruction was done. So if a parent comes and says, OK, I find it extremely difficult to concentrate on my office work uh, by doing it from home. Home working is extremely difficult. Uh, you can encourage them by saying, but during the time that you actually went to the office, you, did, you, you may have criticized saying that you did not have time to spend with your loved ones, with your kids. So why don't you look at this as an opportunity to spend some time with your kids as well. So likewise, cognitive reconstruction or reframing was done uh, in uh, done as another psychological intervention. And also the positive affirmations, uh, it was very important because um, positive affirmations help them uh, to look at uh, life in a better way, in a more successful way. And it's a it's a long term it has a very long term effect. So uh, most of the time we encouraged our patients or the clients and 
shouldn't necessarily be, be a client or a patient, but generally the population to uh, make positive affirmations to themselves, like uh, I'm a victory and I'm not a victim. So every morning or every evening at whenever possible, if they keep on saying that uh, they're a victory and not a victim, that is they are in their subconscious mind and that is what you act for. So uh, most of the people after uh, practicing such positive affirmations uh, came to me and said that it had been very uh, positive and it had a very positive uh, effect on them. So uh, last but not least, uh, change is inevitable. So this is something that we uh, keep in mind, we should keep in mind because change is inevitable. We have to, uh, we have to be ready for change. That is why these positive affirmations are required. And also you have to start looking at everything as an opportunity. So without looking at Corona as a big disruption, if you can take it as an opportunity and start from all over, uh, I think it would be a blessing. So uh, I would like to uh, conclude my presentation by giving the slogan yesterday is history tomorrow is a mystery but today is the gift so be conscious and attract a lot of positivity thank you very much and if you have any questions uh, I can answer